Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of why you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can can and a can can, a can can, a can can, and a wheel. Now we're off to. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. Deb Snell's 40s World with the family of Fair as her co host. Y'all make sure y'all get down in those comments when the video ends. Reflect upon what you look. Uh, what you looked at, what you heard, and deduce it to your logic. And put that stance in the comments down below. And we want you to definitely subscribe and like the video. Definitely subscribe and like the video. Because I know you can, can, and you can, can, and can, can, and can, can. And I know you will. All right? Okay. We're going to get into uh, The Real Housewives of Atlanta that aired last night. Okay, and I don't, I don't, I don't think I know it's season 14 and episode 16. I could care less what the title was because all of it was full of shit. Okay, it was full of shit. I didn't like it. I didn't like, I didn't like it. The only high part was Miss, is it Ray Wan or somebody that was getting, getting Kenya together. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm like, the help getting Kenya together. Girl, Ray Wong was on point, but we'll say that for the last, okay? Let's get on into, let me see. We might as well just talk about Drew and Candy because we didn't see much of Candy, to tell you the truth. We sure did not. We saw her calling herself, um, taking Ace to a uh, his, to see his acting coach, and he was doing his little thing, and I was so proud of him. So proud of him, honey. That's right. Get him when they're young, honey. Get him when they're young. And they can pay for their own damn college education or start their own damn business. I'm like, Ken, why you didn't do this with Riley? Riley would have been a cute uh, actress for Disney or something to that degree. Uh, I guess she wasn't thinking about it at the time, okay? But anyway, we're going to move on. That was pretty much it that Candy. She didn't have a part. She didn't have many parts. She almost just made like a cameo visit. Because uh, we didn't get to her after the Ace situation and him meeting with his acting coach. We didn't see her again until the party that they um, had for Drew's uh, recovery. I don't know, surprise party or whatever. But it really was for Kenya and um, Marlo's uh, uh, birthday. Okay? Which, you <laughs> child. Kenya just slapped can you, I, we we gonna we gonna say that cause I can't believe can you did that, but anyway we go to Drew, and Drew is looking very cute, tiny in her little outfit, her silver outfit with her little scooter, dressed accordingly to what her outfit was. That was cute, cute, cute. Um, she's trying to get well. It was between well, it was okay. It was Sheree's and Drew's idea to throw both Aquarian women, and I'm an Aquarius as well, and when we don't like people, we don't like people, okay? And uh, let the cook, let the cook as far away going to be on that flow, okay? We just can't get with it. You know, we'll tolerate you if we have to be in the situation, but if we don't have to be in the situation, we ain't there. We ain't there, and we'll tell you to your face. I don't like you. I don't like you. I don't respect you, and, and poof, be gone. You know, so, hell, let me be gone, all right? But, yeah, Aquarius can be in a situation and not like it, but if they have to be there, they will be. If they don't have to be in it, they're out, okay? They are out. But, oh, uh, let me see. Um, okay. Talked about Drew. Okay, and Drew and uh, Sheree both said they wanted to throw um uh, both Aquarian women, a party, and probably help them get to talking again, you know, on a cordial note. Because, you know, we saw Marlo and Kenya hanging out when she invited them to come see the spot she was going to be putting her house in. And that was just, you know, wonderful. I, I thought it would last, but it didn't. It didn't last at all. Ooh, child, it was just like a thunderstorm come with the lightning and it just rained a little bit and then it just passed over. That's pretty much how they're 
co-workership, because they ain't got no friendship, co-workership situation went. Okay, and I, I cannot believe, I cannot believe that Sheree did not do a lot more as far as being there, you know, overseeing stuff of that nature. And Drew had to go solo dolo. She had to make all this shit come together because Sheree was one hour, honey. And one thing about the producers, they are on that shit. When they when somebody lie, they bring back the clip on their ass. Okay, and it's funny. <laughs> it was funny. But like I said, Sheree finally showed up with probably one bottle of wine or two bottles of wine. I'm not really sure. But she showed up with something in a brown paper bag. Okay, a brown paper. That's just as bad as Kim Zosiak toting around that red silo cup. Okay. But anyway, it's just is what it is. But sure, right portion of the uh, soiree they had thrown for the two women was 1300 Now, it had to been like the, I, I think they said the DJ was 500 And I don't know what the chef was putting down for them. But it looked very appetizing. It looked, and the settings were very nice. I don't know where Drew got these folks from. But they charged her all in all. Let me see. Let me see. Let me get my, my pen to work in here. It was $2,600. That Drew was out of. So she wanted her portion for Sheree, her thirteen hundred. How did Sheree get there and say, uh, I ain't paying for this stuff. This this don't look like no no um uh, this this is this expense is just overpriced. Is she talking about the balloon was seven hundred dollars and this that and third? I said, Well hey, Sheree, it was your ass who agreed to do that. Now you didn't solicit your advice of what you wanted, then you're late coming to the party, and now you're just adding insult to ins well insult to injury or injury to insult however that goes uh on this um view that you don't like to pay people and drew was like okay she don't want to pay she don't want to pay then she started thinking about what the um the gay assistant had said to her about Sheree don't like to pay her bill she don't like to pay nobody and ain't nobody gonna work for free they shouldn't have to and he right but after I like sure you gonna pay that thirteen hundred dollars. You better pay that thirteen hundred dollars. She thought she she couldn't really pay it. She couldn't get it together because she throwing a fashion show. <laughs> I like fashion my ass. Okay, if you don't sit your one cent ass down and pay this girl her money expeditiously. Okay, that's what you need to be doing, sure. Okay, but that was um. Uh, let's see. Drew gets her. Okay, Drew gets a visit from Sanya. And Sheree, and she has high. Okay, she has high because the pain killers they were giving her for the pain was good. Okay, good, you man, if they give you half of what you get in the hospital, you be in some uh, good sleep and you don't feel no pain. <laughs> but when they throw your ass out the hospital, they give you these old pills <laughs> that be like, I want my IV back. I want to have that push button. I want some Dilaudid. Okay, that, that's the cream of the crop when it comes to uh, pain medicine. You want an IV with a push thing for you to press the button when you feel like you in pain or you anticipating some pain. You push that button and that just goes through your veins. You just be feeling so good, but you be so sleepy. And that's the best sleep, the best sleep. When you go home and they discharge your ass and they be telling you, well, you don't need this. We'll give you some 800 or uh, 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 Tylenol, <laughs> you be like laughing in their face like, uh-uh, I take that on a regular basis. That shit don't do nothing for me. But anyway, uh, Drew, come, you know, she's at home. She's recovering. And um, like I said, Sheree and Sonya come over to the house, try to see how she was doing. They were feeling bad for her because the clumsy ass had tripped over her own damn feet. And it just is what it is. Just is what it is, people. Let's call a spade a spade. Um, and... Um, then we have a, a scene where um, Ralph is doing his book uh, photographs. He was uh, being photographed, a photo shoot he was attending to compliment him on his book that he's writing that uh, Poe Drew don't know nothing about and all this kind of stuff. And then Drew threw in to her mother that um, Ralph wasn't inviting or he wasn't going to be adopting Josiah. And, of course, the mama felt some kind of way. But I'm like, don't throw somebody else, baby, on somebody else, honey. Fall the fuck back. Fall the fuck back, Grandma. Okay? Uh, Drew's mama don't do that. Don't do that. Okay? But to me, 
I don't heard two stories from Mr. Ralph. First, he said that he had had a meeting with Josiah's real dad, and he felt some kind of way. And out of respect, you know, since he was saying he might want to, you know, take care of something, he might want to do better. I guess he can't do it at the time. But he said, no, he, he really didn't want him to adopt them. Now, last night episode, he sat there and told uh, the mama, because he seemed like he's scared of the mama, but he, he spoke his mind. He still held he still held his ground. He said, well, uh, if Josiah asked me to adopt him, then we'll, we'll look into it again. We'll go on and do what we got to do. I'm like, no, that ain't how the law work. That ain't how the law work. Just as long as you got a... A dad out there that's saying he still want to be in his son's life. He done told you he didn't really want you to adopt him. Kind of offended him. And you said you respected that. Now you're going to tell grandma, Drew's mama, kid's grandma, that um, no, uh, he's not adopting <laughs> him. But like I said, if Josiah come to him one day and say, I want you to adopt me, then he said he's going to do it. I said, you can't do it without the, all parties' permission. And from what you said from the first go around, um, Josiah's real biological dad said he didn't want you to. So which is it, Ralph? You want to or you don't want to? Is it more so you don't want to do it other than really? Because they should have had that. They should have actually been on that part so we can get the real truth. Because Ralph going around here lying and shit. That's exactly what he doing. And um, Grandma know. Grandma know. And Drew looking all kind of stupid, too. She know. I'm like, Drew, don't, as long as he's there as a father figure, there's no big deal. Okay, kids just going to have to learn sometime. Their names ain't going to be the same. Okay, it's just what it is. Just like y'all get married. Some people uh, want to keep the children's name, the, you know, the father's name. And, and the uh, divorcee want to keep the family's name, too. Okay. And um, then there's some out there that know they want their name go back to their maiden name. They don't have nothing to do with their ex, whether it be a male or a female. It's just, it's just either or, okay? So I understood his point. He don't want to take care of somebody else's mess legally, okay? But as long as he living, he in good standards, he going to make sure Josiah have a roof, have some food, and have some clothing. But <laughs> he said, no, he ain't adopting Okay, and that was it on those two people. We're going to run on down to Marlo. Yes, we are. We got Marlo. She got the boys back in the house, okay? And she's asking them, have they learned anything from being away from her and the environment she had them in, okay? But she's saying that she hopes that they learned from their lesson of being away from her. She hopes that they respect what she has done for them. And um, that's some bullshit. Just because, you know, Marlo doesn't have to have them kids gone. She, she could have been still structuring and laying down the law with them kids up in there. Okay? But, you know, y'all know who I feel about that. Uh, mm -mm, nope. Then she tells um, she tells them that she's going to be uh, heavily into asking the teachers and asking anybody that have to deal with y'all about y'all work. She's going to be on it. She's going to be on it, doggone it, and, and she better not have no issues. She better not have no issues because they ain't going to get their phones back and probably some other privileges too. But she's pretty much saying, I'm going to go up to that school. I'm going to have me some meetings. Uh, I'm going to have them abreast me of this current situation that is happening. Uh, and hopefully y'all will be getting get it, you all will get it together because she's saying basically when she's going to meet with them, you know, make an appointment, go meet with the teacher or whomever she has to meet with, uh, to discuss how the boys are doing. Um, she want everybody to be saying nice things. She don't want to hear no bad stuff. Okay? But I'm like, Marlo, that's the whole thing of being a parent. You know? Sometimes they're going to listen to you. Sometimes they're not. And sometimes they're going to be indifferent with you. Okay? They're going to act like they own shit. They, you know, they room. They cause that you may get them to drive. All of a sudden, they think they, they got it. Uh-uh-uh. No, 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 no. They're leasing. This is what they're doing. They're renting and leasing until they can get out on their own and do their own thing. That's it. That's all. Just lay down the law. But anyway, Marla can't lay down no law because she don't know the law herself. But anyway, <clears throat> oh, and she also tells them that it's going to be some structure going forward until they get grown and get out of her house or go to college. But she, she, you know, unless they end college, you know what I'm saying? They stay on campus, so that's going to be cool. If they don't stay on campus, you're going to still have them joking with you. And even now, how things are going, when you graduate from college, 
you got to start about paying your loans back. You can't think about having no family, realistically, because you ain't going to be making enough. You got to go find an entry-level job that's going to be paying pennies on the dollar. And unless you're in a science or biolog- biolog- biology field, you might do real good. Uh, but you got to have that math and the science down pat. And I'm talking about geometry, calculus, and any, uh, algebra, all that stuff got to be real fresh in your mind to be able to go work at, like for NASA or something to that degree. And then, then I don't know. I don't know. It depends on how your lifestyle is going. You might still be in debt. But anyway, um, yeah, she's saying they're going to be going to counseling and she's going to be uh, doing all that kind of stuff. And Lord behold, honey, I thought Marla had cooked them a good meal. Okay. No, honey. She had some leftover pizza. What it looked like. I don't know if she got it that same day they came, but it looked like some leftover pizza and some fried chicken. Okay, and I'm like, cholesterol city, Marlo, cholesterol city. You ain't worried about the uh, fat rate, uh, what do you call it? Not the fat, like they're getting fat, but that's too obesity. Obesity is a thing in our uh, black race as well, but the fat uh, intake that they're getting, don't you think that can clog up their little arteries? Girl, you need to be having them go to a uh, doctor's and dentist appointment as well. Okay, along with that counseling. Let me see. Oh, and um, Michael said he real happy to be back because he's he's glad to have his own bed. He ain't sharing it with nobody. Then he messed around and said that um his auntie, which is Marlo's sister, that they bathroom ain't clean. And I would have told him, well, Edgar, did you go in there and clean up after yourself after you went in there? Because you sure wasn't doing that shit when you were living here. So you can't be talking about nobody else. You just a funk in the ass as well, okay? <laughs> Please. So that's going to go on off Marlo because we, we didn't want to hear that shit she be talking. And we're going to talk about Sheree now. <laughs> Sheree is crazy as hell. She think anybody's going to believe that she paid $1 million for some samples of clothing. No, no, no. Marlo, I mean, uh, Sheree needs to sell her one cent ass down. And I said one cent ass, okay? I didn't say no dollar ass. I didn't say no middle dollar ass. I said her one cent, two cent, three cent ass down. That's what she needs to sit. And don't need, just go and throw yourself in the corner. We'll call you when we think we need you for something. Other than that, you just need to sit in the corner with a dunce hat on you, okay? But anyway, um... She was one, like I said, she was one hour late to the soiree. They had called themselves throwing for the Aquarius girls. She complained about paying. She thought she going to pay one fourth. So she really didn't have no input on the decorations. And they were just too, uh, too much for what she could have done it for. She's complaining mostly about the balloons because the balloons were $700. She, and then Drew got back with her. And she said, well, then maybe I'll just pay you a fourth of it. Now, nah, I want you to pay the whole 1300 That's what you need to do. Because we know you ain't putting no million dollars down on no damn uh, fashion show. On no clothes that we ain't even got a chance to see that you saying stuck up in Alaska. Really, Sheree. You almost like that spring, summer, fall shit with the joggers. Okay, athletic wear. <laughs> Girl, you're too much. You're too much. Okay. But, you know, Sheree, you could have really, <laughs> mm, really did better. Baby, you went from Alaska way to L.A., but you said that was your other vendor. But you were using this vendor that was in Alaska. I'm like, is Sarah Palin? Is she still trying to run for governor or something down there? Oh, no, she tried to run for the vice presidency, didn't she? Or was it presidency? I don't know. Because she bought a school. She bought as cuckoo as uh, Sheree is, too. She cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. That's what they should have been. You should have called Sarah Palin. And maybe she would have flew it over on commercial for you, okay? Or one of those cargo uh, airplanes, okay? That's the, Girl, go talk to the Army people. They got, they got, uh... Um, cargo planes that they can probably fly in for you. Where your connection at, Sheree? Where's your connections in the community, girl? Ooh, child. But anyway, because I know we had some local p- designers here in Atlanta that could have definitely worked for her, and they ain't have to go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? No, no, just pick it up. Just have Uber or or or, or DHL deliver the shit. Hey, Amazon, okay. But, no, nah, she wanted to cop out, and, and she wasn't making sense. And that's when you know she was lying. She started stuttering, and she started looking around the world instead of at you when she's trying to uh, tell her side of the story that's really fucked up. Okay? Um, 
Yeah, but I, I really hated that you said Alaska. I almost fell out my seat and said, this girl just ain't going to get it right. She ain't, she ain't going to get it right. She don't want to get it right. Over here, I'm talking about she don't want to pay no $1,300 for some uh, decorations they had did and got the, the nice shell. Uh, and Candy, you know, her speak on it. Uh, A1 did a very good job. Y'all go over there and see what he did. He, he I, I, I'm liking him. I'm liking him now. I'm like, I don't have nothing to say bad about him no more because he, he know how to toe the line, and he makes it funny, and he brings it on back. So y'all go over there to speak on it, Candy's little platform, and uh, hear A1 give him his commentary on uh, last week, ep- I mean, last night episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta, and tell him Dale Chanel, for this world, love the review, and I sent y'all over there. Okay. All right, because I know y'all want to laugh, too, and, I, you know, I know y'all come for me for the laughs and stuff, and the kikis and the ha-has, but he was very funny yesterday when I, well, I know today on my lunch break I was watching him. So that was good, 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 good. I really think, you know, that I know he's talking about him and Candace going to be doing something. I wonder if they're going to put it on a bigger platform where her and A1 interview people because, you know, he's a legend out there in the DJ world. Uh, I think he said one time he was, um, I know he does uh, uh, DJing for Candy them, but he also DJs for J-Lo. Y'all know J-Lo uh, from the block. <laughs> but anyway, that just is what it is, okay? Uh, then we got Sheree, you know, the bone collector Sheree, the bone collector Sheree. She um, sat up there and told, um, what's her name? She sat up there and told, uh saw you when they was over there um you know with drew visiting that uh kenya said that your husband aaron was very aggressive <laughs> mm-hmm. and so you called herself you know complained to me no you don't say aggressive because aggressive get a person killed and them being black too i said yeah if they coming up, up up on some uh police officers that's uh racist and stuff of that nature but hell we were just talking about in jamaica we were feeling fine we were drinking fine the food was good and your husband just lost his damn mind and thought he gonna play uh king like that and then think ken you're gonna still be talking to his ass but yes ralph was very aggressive i'm sorry we, we didn't know if he was gonna jump on it or not i was i was very disappointed that uh, what's his name? Todd and, and Ralph didn't get up and tell him to sit his ass down. Sit his two cents ass down. We got one cent charade and we got two cents Aaron. Both asses need to be in a seat somewhere up in a corner. And we'll call them when we want them back out. Okay? To view or to have a conversation. But at this point, we want them both in the corner with dunce hats on. Uh, and if, if Sonya want to keep playing, she need to be in a dunce hat too. Along with her husband. They can be dunce and like Humpty Dunce. They can be dunce and dunce together. Okay, with uh them both facing the corner, but anyway, um yeah, and they <laughs> they was funny as hell because they showed Kenya being aggressive. Uh, y'all remember when Kim Fields <laughs> was on the show and Kenya was just too tired of her and just showing her ass and all that kind of stuff. She went over there and pulled um Kim Fields' chair from the table, and you know people had to talk to her because you know that could have been a situation because uh if Kim would hit that flow and hurt herself. You know, she would have been doing something. You know, you can't sue Bravo, but you can damn get some litigation for money going into somebody's account ASAP, okay? Yes, Lord. Can you do that? Can you just too much? She was doing too much, and that was not a safe thing for her to be doing because it's almost like an assault charge, okay? Uh, and premeditated because she sat there and probably had to think about that thing to go over there and do that. You see what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, and it was some other, uh, oh, yeah, to show her when her and Marlo were getting the hand situations when they was at, uh, Drew's, uh, little, uh, meet and greet and the, the exercise program she was with, uh, someone else developing it and, and she's a spokesperson for them. Y'all remember when, uh, Marlo and her got the fussing and they both were putting their hands in each other's private spaces, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that was very aggressive of what Kenya did as well. Well, her and Bo- her and Milo both. Uh, and then it was a uh, excuse me, it was another um thing in that they showed of Kenya, but I can't remember what it was. But yeah, Kenya, Kenya has been aggressive as well in um past seasons and this season, uh too. Oh, okay now. <laughs> Ooh, child, 
Nah, you know Sheree ain't loyal to nobody. She ain't loyal to nobody, honey. She'll be a snitcher, but you know like they say, snitches get stitches, okay? That's why she had to be off the show for a couple of seasons, all right? But uh, <laughs> the last thing was, this helpful, Minnie Sheree, she gonna go around here and get some trinket boxes, okay? They're see-through boxes, like kind of what you put memorabilia in, like a, a real, uh, say for the men, they collect those uh automobiles collector's items and they put them in a glass casing well Sheree had something like that but she called them glass invitations okay like she's cinderella around there going around here so uh, make it st stuff appear okay but anyway she, and, it, and, and what she did was like some miniature clothing i don't know if it was going to be clothing she was going to be showcasing because can't even say something well you need to sell this idea to uh the toy company <laughs> And you start making clothes for Barbie and shit. I was like, Candy, go ahead, girl. Go ahead. I liked it that one. I want to I want to shake your hand, Candy. <laughs> said that. But she did. She passed out some invitations, some box invitations with some um little bit uh men and women. Like a like it's a, a little uh what do you call it? A figurine <laughs> of some clothing inviting them to her fashion show. I said now <laughs> you spent all that damn money on that, but you can't get your clothes from Alaska to Atlanta, girl. Sit your one sit ass down, girl. I was in the right crazy the <laughs> Oh, Lord, that was funny as hell. That was funny as hell. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> wait for somebody to throw that shit in her face. I will wait for somebody to throw that shit in her face. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm like, who designed those things, Sheree? Can you get them to design your clothes? Woo. Boy, that was funny. That took the shit out of me. That took the shit out of me. Woo. I got to hold my... I got to get off Sheree. I got to get off Sheree because I'll be laughing the whole rest of this taping. And hopefully y'all laughing with me, okay? Because y'all just had to see the episode. And she went out here passing them around like they something. <laughs> Dumb ass, dumb ass. Okay, but anyway, we're gonna go to Sonya. Sonya sitting there talking to Sheree and Sheree telling her what Kenya felt about. She was scared. She didn't really know Aaron's intentions. He was got up from his seat. He was being very aggressive, this, that, and the third. And then Sonya gonna call Kenya on the phone and try to check up. And it sounded like Kenya was asleep. But Kenya was like, <laughs> that damn bone collector, Sheree, she don't know how to keep her ass, her mouth closed for nothing. I mean, nothing. And she was like, uh, I'm about to call you back <laughs> when I wake up. <laughs> and she ain't say nothing else to this, Sonya. I know, Sonya, I, I believe Kenya had hung up that phone before, uh, Sonya gonna say, uh, bitch, my bitch, or something like that. I'm like, uh-uh. Y'all do it too much. Y'all do it too much. So you, 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 didn't, you don't understand the situation of being a cast member on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. You hadn't learned the art. Maybe they'll give you, because I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I really want to see you grow into this role. It was your first time. And at first, I didn't want your ass back. But you know what? I said, mm, it was her first time uh, dealing with all the ladies at one time. She didn't too much know them here and there. Let's give her another season. So I hope they bring her back and maybe she can stand up to Kenya because she failed miserably, miserably. And I, I just watched her crash and burn and just said, put tarp over her. <laughs> put, put some tarp over her. You know, when your roof get damaged, you have to put that blue tarp on top of the roof so it won't damage the house inside. <laughs> like she dead, she gone. She's dead on arrival. Put the tarp on her, okay? We don't want to see her no more. <laughs> we don't. We don't want to see her no more because she wasn't ready. Hell, she can't even get Drew straight, okay? Oh, child, you can't even get Drew straight. And you can't, probably can't get Sheree straight either. But it just is what it is. Because all of them lied to her about going to her events. They were doing whatever they wanted to do. And then they're going to come show up talking about where's the car, where's the van, so we can get to her event. Then two and three hours late. Nah, I'll set y'all asses down. Okay, then we get to the piece de resistance. We have Kenya Moore. Okay, Kenya has definitely entertained us this year, this season. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I think she finally met, met her match. <laughs> and the lady's not even on the show. Her name is Miss Rowan, okay? She's an event planner. Sheree has definitely hired to uh, make sure her dreams come true. She's supposed to be hiring models. She's supposed to be uh, making sure, I guess, the food there, the decorations, and definitely uh, making sure the women get the fashions and men to wear on her um, surprise, surprise. <laughs> It fashion show if it happens child. and it seemed like somebody's being late with the fashion show because they showed us a preview of it and everybody evidently been sitting up for about an hour or so and shit ain't happened <laughs> i was like did, did, did they need to go do what was his name dj one said some interesting stuff they said maybe uh she could go borrow some clothes from tags <laughs> Uh oh, Rashida's so press. <laughs> just take something off the model or donate the clothes and just say they were sure had designed them. I wouldn't nobody know. <laughs> but I don't know Dwight probably would. Dwight probably said that's horrible. Fashions, we're having a show, fashion show with no fashions. And then if he caught wind, then she went over the tags, candy store, and Rashida press, he probably would have asses out again. Barring fashions, but no fashion show. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy! But <laughs> we're we gonna go through. We're just gonna go through what her, her assistant <laughs> or event planner Ravon has said. He went in them guns blazing. She ain't like nothing this lady had did. And I'm like, can you not see her Gucci? <laughs> She had a Gucci hot job, okay? She was she was swallowed up all in there. I'm like, that lady know what she's talking about. But Kim was just taking ah, everything from her. Nah, you ain't doing this right. Nah, you ain't doing that right. Why we got it done this way? And then Ramon said, this ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> and Kim said, I think it is. <laughs> from the looks of things, baby, I think it is. But I like that this is a wrong. <laughs> got Kenya ass together in her own way, and I was there for it. I said, it's a shame. <laughs> we got to have a help get Kenya ass together. Because Kenya didn't know what to say. Kenya didn't know what to say. Because every time she said something, Ron came back with something else, okay? Like Ron said, uh, after the models uh, got together and they were fussing about, uh, you know, like m most professional um people that model and they be working for agencies and they have the head shots they do right on the back of the uh the picture that was taken of them their their contact information so i've seen that before uh so that's not something that's not unheard of but that wasn't how rowan gets down she knows uh, you know she have her own little system but kenya's like no baby your system is not working for me so we need to try some things and i'm like to right why you didn't check can you said baby you just here to observe that's it nothing else nothing no no more you're not here to do anything else can you but you know kenya just you know it, when she, kenya can see her way she going she going through it like a tornado okay she going to twirl her way in now so she could take some credit of Sh on, on charade's non-existent fashion show okay but anyway they were still fussing like i said about the headshots and putting the contact information on the back and you know ron just got mad she just a fuck it uh that's fine it will make you feel better and then can you say yeah it makes me feel better <laughs> ron said i'm happy for you can you said i'm happy for me too and then ron said confetti <laughs> Like when she said, I'm like, Lord, I'm just envisioning my head, this confetti, just flying down on Kenya. Just flying. <laughs> like, it's the, um, well, you know, we get the peach drop at the end. <laughs> and all these little things just be coming out the air. The celebration session. <laughs> she said, confetti. <laughs> and Kim said, mm. <laughs> Ooh, that was funny as hell. That was funny as hell. Um. Oh yeah, and um, um, what's her name? <laughs> King was telling her, uh, why are you trying to keep it a secret on having a model cast? You need everybody to know. And Rowan said, no, she was keeping it on the down low because that's what uh Sheree had wanted her to do. <laughs> so you should have been fussing that Sheree, not Rowan, because Rowan said she know people. And then they were talking about the models and stuff and how much the cost was. And um, she was 
I guess, uh, asking Rowan in a half nasty, half nice way. And she said, uh, you have to have a budget for models. <laughs> Like get them told, get both of their asses told, and then uh, <laughs> I guess Sheree felt some kind of way. She said, "Well, okay, what 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 do you suggest?" Uh, she said, "We can get some local Atlanteans here. It'll be about two hundred to five hundred dollars." And see, I don't know if that was an hour or that was for a four hour show. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, Sheree said, I ain't got no money for it. I ain't got no money. Kenya was like, what do you mean you don't have no money? What, what are you talking about? Oh, honey. I'm like, Kenya, unless you're going to drop some money in her wishing well, <laughs> you, you, you're you not going to get what you want, okay? You're not going to get the quality. I'm sure everybody's going to be like, ah. but like I said, I've seen some apparel. I don't know if it's hers, and I did that on my last video on her. It seems because she was uh, in the fashion herself, and it had she by Sheree. So hopefully, she may have some garments for us to purchase. Well, not let me take it back because I did see something when uh, Kenya was going into the uh, meeting room or the area they was um, having the models come out and uh, model for them. Sheree ain't got sizes but two, two to six, meaning. She ain't got nothing for the big voluptuous people. Now, how dare you? You you, you could could spend no more money. We I know we t take up a little bit more fabric, baby. But you know, big people like to sport uh celebrities' clothes as well. Okay, girl, we got some big people in the industry that will want to support you. But right now, you only have sizes from two to six. Who gonna wear those? Candy couldn't even get in that shit. Okay. Uh, Sonya might can get in it because she's a little thin something, okay? But, uh, who, who else gonna get in that girl? And you, I, you, I bet you don't even wear a size 6. You look like about a 10 or 12, Sheree. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. So, again, it's like, we ain't got nothing. We ain't got shit. We ain't got nothing from She by Sheree. Because She by Sheree ain't shit if they going just for 2 to 6. 2, 4, 6. Th that's only three sizes you got, baby. Child, please. Ain't nobody got time to go on no serious weight loss and just slide their asses into your your apparel that's probably cheap as hell. But I, I, I digress. I digress. But that's all I got for this video, guys. Hope y'all like it, love it, and y'all definitely get entertained and laugh. Because <laughs> I sure had fun talking about it. And I will see y'all on the next video. Bye-bye.